Check, 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 test. How we doing? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, just give me a wave from your seat. Good morning. Welcome. So glad that you guys are here. Today is going to be an absolutely fantastic Sunday. We've got a lot of great things in store. A couple things as we're getting started this morning. Uh, as you're coming in, you'll notice that in the seat back in front of you, which I love saying, I just love it, that we have seats with backs and pockets. Man, it's the small things, gang, really. But on the seat back in front of you is a little card, looks like this. Uh, everybody grab one, kind of hold it up so I can see that you have one. Make sure. Here we go. That's great. Yeah. Now uh, put your hands in the air and just wave them around like you just don't care. That's how church is going to go today. Um, it's going to get a little funky. Um, but I would love for you to at some point in the service today to fill this out. This does a couple of things. One is it lets us know that you were here today and knowing that you came to church is important to us. You may be thinking, hey, I'm just a slip in, slip out kind of cat. That's okay. Write your name down. We are just so grateful that you're here. Also, if there are ways that we can pray for you and come alongside each and every week, our ministry team, our elders, we gather to pray over the requests, the things that are happening in the life of this church. And man, there was a huge stack last week and I was so grateful to see the vulnerability and openness about the things that you want to go before the Lord on. And so let's continue that and fill this out. But if you're a guest here today, thank you for hanging out with us. I mean, I pray that this is such a blessing to you. At the end of service, I would love for you to bring your Connect card to a place we have in the back called Welcome Home. And we have a gift for you. We'd love to get to know you and just answer any questions that you might have about our church. But gang, this is going to be a very, very special Sunday. As always, we have activity uh, kits in the back, uh, in, the, in these bags for kids in the back there. So if you need something for the kiddos to do during service, that is available for you as well. But man, let's stand right where we are if you're able to. And we're going to pray as we get started here this morning. Oh Lord, we, we are just so grateful to be able to be in your presence, to be in your midst as we make much of you in this place. Lord, I'm just thinking that over the last several months, there's been so much work and construction and effort being put into this place. And, and in so many ways, this beacon of light has set kind of quiet, working, preparing, in anticipation of today. And so today, Lord, we gather to just not just sing and, and listen and learn and, and to hang out with each other, but we gather today to be this, this huge magnifying glass to just radiate your light, your goodness, your hope to the neighborhoods all around us. So Jesus, we ask that you would move mightily today. We know that you will. We know, Lord, that you are going to do a mighty work in this place as we explore you, as we worship you, as we gather around your table, as we build relationships. Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that you are among us. And God, we are, we are honored to be your children. And today we worship you, we exalt you. God, we are just so thankful to be in your presence. Let us worship you now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's sing.
Continue singing this morning, thanking our Savior for his work on the cross. Oh, my 
700 years before Jesus even stepped foot on the planet, there was a prophet, a man named Isaiah, that testified to the one that was to come. That it won't be today, it won't be tomorrow, it won't be a week or even a century from now. But in in centuries from now, there will be the one that God will send that will fix all that is broken. The one that will make all things new, the one that will redeem the one who by his stripes people can be made new. And this is what Isaiah said. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He didn't have an impressive form or majesty that we should look at him, no appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses. And he carried our pains. And we in turn regard him stricken 
struck down by God, afflicted, but he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punished for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. Man, that is the hope. For all who call Christ Lord, that is the hope that in him we find healing, in him we find peace. Even though the world give way, even though the mountains fall into the sea, even though life is hard, days are dark, people are lonely, and pain is real. For those that call Jesus Lord, there is hope. And so each and every week we celebrate the hope of God by taking communion. And communion is this meal that Jesus had with his disciples before he was betrayed, before he gave his life for sin, where he sat and he taught an object lesson. Jesus said, this is bread. Watch it be broken. And it's like my body that's about to be broken for you. And this is wine. And it represents blood. And my blood's going to be shed for you for the forgiveness of sin, ushering in this new covenant, this new day. And in that moment... Jesus was preparing his disciples for the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 53. And so we celebrate because Jesus said, as often as you gather, as often as you eat, as often as you drink, remember me. And so this morning, if you're looking for hope, this morning, if you're looking for forgiveness, this morning, if you're looking for healing, this is your moment with the Lord to do whatever business you need to do so that you can find peace. And as you go to one of the four stations around the room, there's a few things that you can do. Not only can you take communion, but you can take your connect card and your prayer request and you can give that to us by placing it in the offering box so we can be in prayer for you. And also you can give your gift today. Now I know some of you are visiting or your guests here and churches all handle giving and offerings a little bit differently we find it a joy to give here we don't have to give we get to give and we think that's a that's a privilege and a blessing but here at redemption we're never going to tell you how much to give ever we we uh, we believe that's between you and the lord but when you give you give joyfully and cheerfully knowing that whatever you give the lord's going to multiply because listen up gang and i you, you guys know it's coming right god doesn't need your what no he does not but the people what and the mission what? Demands it. And so we give because we get to. And so we're going to trust the Lord for what's next. I'm going to pray that I'm going to invite you to go find peace, find healing. Father, help us as we move to one of our stations. Help us as we spend time with you looking for answers to the hard things in life as we try to snuggle up close to you to experience some proximity today that maybe we've been lacking. Help us, Jesus, to just find the realness of our faith in this moment as we gather around the table to remember your broken body, your shed blood, for the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, for the forgiveness of sin, for the securing of eternal life for the believer. Help us, Jesus, respond well now to you. It's in your good name that we pray. Amen. I'll ask that you exit through the outside and enter through the inside. You're dismissed to one of the stations.
Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. Hey, uh, how, how awesome was that? Right? Oh, my gosh. That, that's, it's like studio quality, man. It's, uh, you can't hear me at all? Oh, now he can't. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, I was going to really leverage that opportunity. Man, it just, what a beautiful, beautiful day to be together, gang. Mm. I'm excited for our time in Scripture. Again, I just want to say thanks to everybody who worked really hard to make this place a reality and very much looking forward to seeing how God's going to use it to impact this community. But man, today we're going to spend a little time together jumping into some scripture. We started a new series last weekend called Do It Again. And the whole point of this series was to be kind of a deep dive into the most important and comforting attribute of God, his faithfulness. It is from God's faithfulness that everything else about God flows. So if God is not faithful, then God is not God. So this is one of the most, if not the most important characteristic of God that we get to take a deep dive into. it. And so much of, here, look, so much of our faith journey, so much of who we are, if we're growing in our faith, if we're trying to, I mean, if we're really trying to mature as followers of Jesus, so much of that is hinged on God's faithfulness. Your good days, your bad days, the wins in life, the failures, all hinged on God's faithfulness. And everybody wants to know that God's faithful. We want to know if we can trust him. We want to know if we can depend on him. We want to know if we can really lean on him in times where things get really hard and difficult. We want to know that God is not just for us, we want to know that God is with us and moving with us. We want to know that God's not going to leave us when we have a shred of doubt appear in our life or we have a sin that seems to overtake a season. Because here's the thing, it's more than just being skeptical. It's more than just questioning the reliability of God because many times what we're wanting to know, watch, you we're together on this. What we're really wanting to know deep down is, is God actually faithful? We're not even concerned if the Bible's true. What we're concerned about, is God the God of the Bible? Because in the Bible, you see this beautiful portrait painted of God's faithfulness. If you've read scripture, that's what you see. We see God creating life. We see God building personal relationship with his most prized creation, humanity. We see that God even had a plan to fix man's mistake when man rebelled against God. We read all throughout scripture of a journey of God taking his people on a quest to see that plan fulfilled. That's what you see when you read the Bible, is God literally making a promise in the very first few chapters and keeping that promise. And over the course of 66 books written by 40 different authors on three different continents, over the course of 1,500 years, what you see is God's faithfulness on display. And so what we want to know deep down, man, is like, is that the God of the Bible? It, is that who God really is? Does my life have room for a God like that? Because that's the God we all want. I don't care who you are in this room. I don't care what your background is or what your current doubts or skepticism or struggles are. Everybody wants a God like that. A God that is for you, working on your behalf, loves you, cares for you, and wants good for your life. Amen? Everybody wants a God like that. Even people who claim that there is no God want a God like that. We all want a God that doesn't fail. We all want a God that isn't caught off guard. We want one that is perfect, untouched by sin, and always keeps his word. That's a God we want. 
Why? Watch. Faithfulness matters. Don't tell me it doesn't. Everybody in here, faithfulness matters. It, 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 it's always mattered because it's an attribute of God that he's placed in us as his image bearer. We value faithfulness. We value it. Faithfulness is a big deal on all sorts of levels. Obviously the big ones, right? Relationships, promise making, contracts, agreements. When someone says they're going to do something, you want them to be faithful and fulfill what they say they're going to do. So obviously it matters, but look here. Faithfulness matters on a small level too. Even like the smallest of levels. So for example, I mean, let me help flesh this out for you. A lot of us have possessions, heirlooms, things that we consider to be kind of faithful, right? Like we got that old truck. Man, that old truck, she's been good to me. She's been faithful, right? We know somebody like that. We got that favorite shirt, dress, pair of jeans. Like how long have you had that shirt since college? 40 years ago? Yeah, polyester holds up over time. It's what we're learning you know, right? It's faithful, man. Like, it's a faithful. <clears throat> I'm old school. Don't let my hip wardrobe confuse you. I, uh, I love old phones. I love old technology. I have an answering machine in my house. Some of you are like, a what? <laughs> See me afterwards. I'll pray with you. Look, like, hey, we have an answering machine that still uses a cassette. And so on the sixth ring... You hear it click on, click, click, you reach right over, beep, that's what you get, right? Those were awesome. How many of you ever faked an answering machine message when someone called back in the day? You know what I'm saying? Like, hello? Oh, no. Uh, you've reached, uh, yeah. That answering machine is 40 years old and still works. It's faithful, you know? Faithfulness matters even on the small things. It made me think of a story that I saw recently. Some of you will really uh, resonate with this. There's a dude named Dave Mitchell. He's a British veteran. He served in multiple tours over the years. He's in his late 60s now. Well, in the year 2000, he bought a cell phone. He bought the Nokia 3300 series, also known as the brick. You know what I'm talking about? The one you could play snake on? Like those were good days. That dude has been using that same phone since 2000. And in 2017, Nokia caught up with him and did a story on him because he was still using it. Same phone, same battery. Plug it in, 10 days. 10 days. And in his, in his article, he was talking about how this cell phone, this Nokia brick, has survived a war and a washing machine. I remember back in the day, like, dude, if you dropped your iPhone in the toilet, like, game over, you know? There's just something about this longing within us that we recognize faithfulness, we long for faithfulness, and when faithfulness happens in areas that we don't expect, it brings so much excitement to our lives. And that resonates with every person, regardless of background. Why? Here, I'll tell you. Because we expect things to fail. We expect things to break. We expect things to stop. The entire world is centered around brokenness, loss, and death. So we are, as a people, accustomed to things not staying perfect. And on a deeper level than that, when people hurt us, when they fail to be reliable, when they break their promises, when we do those things to other people, we're just reminded of how rare faithfulness is. Because faithfulness, here, look at me, faithfulness in any form in today is rare. It's rare. That's a hard place to be. And I think that's why, deep down, we all want God to be faithful. We all want it. Because if God is faithful, then there is hope. Everyone say hope. hope. That's what we want, gang. So if God's faithful, there's hope. 
Faithfulness brings hope. This is, man, this is what we're discovering through this series. This is why doing a study of Lamentations, particularly chapter 3, is so good for us. Because Jeremiah, Jeremiah finds himself in the middle of one of the most graphic, violent, historical moments in human history. He finds himself a casual observer, if you will, of a Babylonian takeover of the southern kingdom of Israel. Judah is being demolished in front of his very eyes, and Jeremiah is walking through the streets and the alleys, and he's watching the Babylonians slaughter every single man that they come in contact with. So Jeremiah is in the middle of just observing this pain and this trauma and this war. And his heart breaks. It's like it's being ripped out of his chest. And so Jeremiah just pours his guts out. He's transparent. He's honest about what he's experiencing. And God uses that to form these five poems, these five individual poems called the Book of Lamentations. And it's so interesting because last week we see this little kind of hint of a bright spot in the middle of chapter 3 where seemingly all the sadness and despair of Jeremiah takes just a quick break, long enough for him to gain some perspective on things, and then he gets right back into it. But for just a moment, we saw last week, looking at verse 22, that God is faithful because not everyone's dead. Now keep in mind, you're sitting there thinking, okay, why is this going on? If God's so faithful, if God loves his people, then why is this happening? Well, let's Let's not forget that God had been in the business of warning his people for centuries about their idolatry. And that if you don't repent, if you don't return, I will correct you. And they did not listen. Prophet after prophet after prophet. In fact, God gave them judges, God gave them kings, God gave them prophets. And still, they were idolatrous and sinful. And so God punished them for their own good. And allow the Babylonians to conquer them for their own good. But here's the thing. And I know this is going to be hard for you to get your head around. But God didn't let everyone die. And because not everyone died, you can see God's faithfulness in the midst of it. And this is what Jeremiah sees. That not all died. And where God leaves life, God leaves hope. And that's what we saw last week. God's mercy, his love is present even when his judgment is heavy. And this is a part of growing in our understanding of God's character and nature that we've got to get our heads around. If you've reduced God to a singular channel of good or great, mercy, grace, harsh, you have to grab the holistic nature of God. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to go a little bit further, get a little bit deeper in understanding God's faithfulness and how it's experienced. Because ultimately, watch, God's faithfulness is experienced in his mercy. That's how you experience God's faithfulness, is in his mercy. So let's open up Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to look at just a few verses together today. If you have your Bibles with you, Lamentations chapter 3, if we're using a device here, uh, we use the Christian standard Bible, the CSB, as you're following along, Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 22 through 26 today. So follow along with me. It says, because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. They are new every morning, because great is your faithfulness. I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the lord god's faithfulness is experienced it's proven in his mercy jeremiah says that god's mercies are new when say it louder every morning 
So let's explore that a little bit together today, okay? Let's jump in because here's the thing. Even in the severity of correction, God's people endured, there was evidence of his compassion. And I want you to see that. That even in the midst of this terrible judgment that God has unleashed on his people, rightly, there is compassion to be experienced. And there was rich comfort in realizing that this this tender affection of God was not completely lost. But rather, there were compassions, there were mercies meant to be given new every single day. This is a huge idea around the character and nature of God. And there's beauty. And if, if you're reading this passage, you're like, where's the beauty in this, man? Let me help you. The beauty, as one commentator puts it, is that this passage is full of beauty as it deals with the tender compassions of God, which had never been absent even in the work of punishment. That even in the work of punishment, God's compassion and his love wasn't absent. So the only way that Jeremiah was able to see beauty is by taking time to look back. By remembering. And so last week we talked a lot about remembering. Remembering all the good things that God has done. Remembering the times in the past when God has been faithful. Times where God has shown up, where he's loved you, where he's provided for you, where he's intervened for you, where he's corrected you for your own good. Where God said no to some things that you really wanted him to say yes to. Here's the thing. Looking back is so good. And the older you get, to my younger folks in the room, the older you get, the more of a gift this is. Hindsight is a gift. Because you can look back and see God's faithfulness in so many ways. Look, in verse 21, Jeremiah says, here watch, he says he calls to mind. He calls to mind. This phrase means that that Jeremiah is actively remembering. Actively remembering. His Memory is triggered, and he's able to remember all the good that God has done. And it gives him much needed perspective, much needed perspective, so that he's able to rightly deal with the pain that he's experiencing right now. And the reason why so many of you have such a hard time dealing with the pain that's in your life right now is because you lack perspective, because you're not taking inventory of the goodness of God that's played out over the course of your life. Immaturity in the past will only beget immaturity in your future. It is only but by taking inventory and remembering and learning do you mature and grow and see the goodness of God. I don't want you to miss this. Everybody look at me. God's faithfulness should, should mark our past. It should govern our present And inform our future. It should mark our past. It should govern our present. And it should inform our future. Jeremiah being able to remember all that God has done. Has now given him the ability to rightly deal with all that's happening in this moment. That's why he has hope. Because hope isn't merely an idea about the future. Man, I cannot stand how we use hope in our culture. Hope is always about later or next or tomorrow i really hope she makes it in time i really hope we get to go here for vacation i really hope the kids do well this year in school i really hope i really hope hope is not a future idea it's a gift that helps us in the present so we can process and endure our realities now hope is meant to be experienced in the present not something that one day may be That's why Jeremiah said, God, your mercies never end. You're so faithful. You're so faithful that your mercies are new every morning. Here's a thought for you. Each dawning day, each dawning day gives mankind hope in fresh mercies and compassions from God. Every day. We need a constant supply. And God has promised to send them without fail. Without fail. And so no matter how bad the past day was, God's people can look to a new morning with faith and hope. And the faith and hope that you need for tomorrow to be a better day is experienced today. 
not tomorrow. That's the beauty. Are you experiencing that kind of hope? Are you experiencing that kind of hope? Do you find that kind of peace in God's faithfulness? Or are you looking back? I mean, are you looking back at all that God has done and remembering his goodness? Do you see his faithfulness? Do you know what mercy is? People confuse mercy and grace all the time. We confuse these all the time. Mercy is defined as compassionate or kindly forbearance shown toward an offender, an enemy, or other person in one's power, compassion, pity, or benevolence. It's being compassionate toward someone else in your own power based on your kindness, your pity, your benevolence. Here's a better definition. Something that gives us evidence of divine favor. You want to you boil mercy down? Mercy is evidence of divine favor. That's what it is. Mercy is God's divine, unmerited, undeserved favor. And for those who trust God, and for those of us that are his people, that favor is fresh every single day. It's like warm muffins coming out of the oven. Speaking of which, I'm going to eat some muffins tomorrow. That sounds delicious, actually. <laughs> These mercies are always new because they come from God. They're not dependent on you. Does it, doesn't that just like go, yes, thank you, God, like deep inside? Like, what if God's daily mercies were contingent on your, your previous day's activities? Some of you are, all, like, you're already in the negative. You're like, you're not getting mercy from God until, like, 2050. <laughs> right? This is where we are. They come from God. Let, hey, let me give you a little something from the Spurge. Here you go. Spurgeon. He says, our treasures which we lay up on earth are the stagnant pools, but the treasure which God gives us from heaven in providence and in grace is the crystal fount which wells up from the eternal deeps and is always fresh and is always new every day. Mm! Is that not what you want? This swelling of God's favor and goodness every single day. And as many of us understand, we need to be reminded of this truth. Many of us need to learn this truth as well. Because some of you are looking at God wrongly. Some of you do not have a right and proper relationship with God. And you do not understand his character and nature. Therefore, you are not responding rightly to his character and nature. And you just expect God to give you mercy because God's merciful. And that's not how this works. God gives you mercy because he's God. And you are not. We have got to learn the harsh truths that God's justice is good and right, but his mercy is never absent in his justice, ever. Some of you are going through really difficult times right now. Some of you are dealing with pain, you're dealing with hurt, you're dealing with loss, you're dealing with all sorts of tension at your job, at your school, with your family. And you don't feel those mercies being made new every day. You just don't feel it. I don't see it. If anything, you feel like you're in a boat drifting further and further and further away from the shore into a dark, quiet place where you feel alone and abandoned. Maybe you feel like Jeremiah. You don't think you can relate to the Bible? Let me help you out. Look back at verses 16 through 20 briefly. Chapter 3, verse 16. He ground my teeth with gravel, and he made me cower in the dust. And I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. And then I thought my future is lost as well as my hope from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my homelessness, the wormwood and the poison. 
I continually remember them and I have become depressed. Man, that's, that's powerful vulnerability. Powerful. And maybe that's you. Maybe there's a great deal of hurt or loneliness or you've lost hope. But let me encourage you because in verse 21, verse 21, what does Jeremiah do? Look at it, gang. Yet I call this to mind and therefore I have what? Say it. Come on. I have hope. Yes, I'm depressed. Yes, life is hard. Yes, I'm miserable. But if I can just take a moment and remember, man, I get a little bit of hope. I get a little bit of hope. God's mercy is new every day. Therefore, you have access to hope every day. God's mercy is new every day. Therefore, you have access to hope every day. Why? Because, here you go. Here's the thought for you. Every morning ends the night. Every morning begins a new day. Every morning brings new provision for the day. Every morning brings new forgiveness for new sins. And every morning brings new strength for new temptation, new duties, and new trials. Every morning. And I know, that, I know that you may be suffering today. I know that some of you are silently suffering. I know that. Look at me. I need you to get through today. I just need you to get through today. And I need you to wait on the Lord. Even if today feels a, a lot like a week, even if today feels a lot like a year, even if today feels a lot like a long time of hurt. Here's what I've come to learn. Let me share this with you. That there are times when the only thing a sufferer can do is wait for God. But waiting is good because God is worth waiting for. This is what I've learned. And so one day soon, your hard day will be over. A new morning is coming. A new morning that will bring mercy and hope and a reminder of God's love, his faithfulness, and his goodness. And the evidence of this is all around you. If but only you can take a minute and call to mind. It's all around us, church. Even in a long, dark day, you have you have this opportunity to look around you. This is why being part of a church is so critical. And some of you treat church like it's just something to do if you're not doing anything else. And you wonder why you're struggling. You wonder why you're alone. You wonder why you don't feel connected. You wonder why you don't got anyone to talk to. And so instead you turn to more misery, more sadness, more alcohol, more drugs, more pornography. Why do you turn to those things? Because you're alone. And yet you have this church around you that says, I love you and I want to be a part of your life. This is why being a part of a church is so critical. Because we get to help each other be broken. I'm not better than you. But I'm better with you. I'm broken. You're broken. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But because of his great love and mercy for us, Christ has made us new and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Mm. We get to be on that journey together. And if you don't want to be part of that, you need to buckle up because you're going to be a, on a long, long journey of pain and loneliness. We get to help each other shoulder the burdens. We get to walk through the hard times together. We get to be an encouragement for one another. We get to call stuff out in each other. Look what God has done for redemption. Last week, we took a look back at his faithfulness. And today, we celebrate our first public service in our new building. And here we are, standing in the midst of his mercy and his goodness. Here we are at the beginning of a new season and a new chapter on a new day. And that brings hope. Because just because you can't see God moving in your life in the direction and the time in which you want doesn't mean you can't see him doing it in someone else's life. We need each other, church. We need to help remind each other that God is faithful and that what God has done, he'll do it again. 
I'm proof that God will do it again. You are proof that God will do it again. His mercies will be made new every day. And he'll do it again and again and again. That's the hope we find in experiencing and embracing the new mercies of God. You know the hope we find is it never ends. It never ends. So do not turn this passage into a coffee mug or a t-shirt or I will find you. Mm, God's mercies are new every day. Stop it. No one's trying to invade your family. God's mercies are new every day because he brings new hope and new restoration. He brings new promises. He brings fresh eyes and he brings healing and hope. That's why his mercies are new every day. Not because you deserve them, but because he loves you. That's good news, gang. So what do you need to do today to step into new mercies? Where do you need to find the hope for tomorrow today? We're going to sing a song and we're going to finish up our time together this morning. And as we do, I want to invite you to do a couple of things. I want to invite you to ask the Holy Spirit to search you. Maybe this is new for you. Maybe you haven't talked to God in a long time. Let me tell you, it's real easy to talk to God. All you have to do, here, watch. You ready? I'm going to teach you. This is years of seminary. I'm going to teach you. Ready? All you got to do is this. You just got to talk. That's free. I did that after the offering. You're welcome. All you got to do is talk, man. You think God's waiting around like, oh, if he was only more eloquent. Oh, Lord. No, just open your mouth and talk and be vulnerable. Just talk. Ask the Holy Spirit to move and to speak to you today. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal whatever's keeping you from finding the hope for tomorrow today. If you would like someone to pray with you, to help you form words that you can't seem to form today because the pain's too hard, we'll have a couple of our prayer partners down front for you today that you are welcome to come during this song and we would love to pray with you, put an arm around you, encourage you, minister to you. And then we're going to be available after service for a little bit as well. But this is a chance to respond today, gang. So whatever you got, whatever you're holding on to, don't leave here alone. Don't leave here holding on to it by yourself. Let's give it away. And let's shoulder that burden together. Let's stand together. Lord, help us to sing this song rightly and well. Help us to experience your goodness and your faithfulness. Help us to be reminded that you call us into community. That Jesus, you died to bring the church to life. You died to be for us everything we've ever needed. And you have manifested that in the local church. And that here, this place, we're not just opening a building, Lord, we're we're declaring to a city, to a neighborhood, to a, to a community that there is hope here. There's hope here, Lord. So let us first be the model of that. And let us just be vulnerable by asking you to search in our hearts today to give us hope for tomorrow today. Help us to explore the struggles and pains that we have. Help us to be willing to share those burdens. Jesus, may you be magnified during these moments that we give to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Jesus has not done in your life, he's not done in the lives of the people that your heart is burdened for today. Because for many of you, your hearts are broken, not for yourself, but for the other person who's just walking in, in the lostness, in the darkness of a night. And just longing that the Lord would bring the hope of a new day. Believe he'll do it, because he will. He's done it before, he'll do it again. So that's, man, that's the hope that we have today. A couple things as we're wrapping up. Each and every week, our cafe is open for you to create community. We'd love for you to sit on our couches. We'd love for you to spill stuff on our rugs. We'd love for you to make yourself at home. We have tables out there for you. Okay, don't spill stuff. Riddell will fight me later. She's already upset. Um, but we want you to, point is we want you to feel at home here. So we want you to come early, stay late, use the cafe, connect with each other. Also, if you're a guest here today, we want to say welcome home to you. We'd love to connect with you in the back. We have a, a station. We have some gifts for you. We want to get to know you a little bit better. But man, we are excited. We are excited about what God's doing in this place. Lord, thank you for how you've moved today. Thank you for the hope that you've given us where maybe we didn't have any. Thank you, Jesus, that hope tomorrow isn't something that we, we might get, but it's something we are guaranteed to get today, Lord, because of you, Jesus. We thank you. We are so grateful for what you have in store. Jesus, it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Have a great week, gang. See you. Bye.